Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley with Haley Stitches, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a super easy one charm pack quilt. This quilt uses two and a quarter yards of background fabric and one charm pack, and it's set on point, meaning all the blocks are tilted 45 degrees. If this is your first on point quilt, don't be scared, I break down every single step in today's video. You can grab the free quilt pattern using the link in the description below. All you have to do is enter your email address and I'll send it directly to your inbox. And before we get started, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. Let's dive in. First, let's go over all the supplies we need for today's project. You'll need two and a quarter yard background fabric, a charm pack. I'm using Springbrook by Cory Yoder. You'll also need matching thread. I always use the color Dove by Aurifil, and this is the 50 weight thread they offer. You'll need some pins, a rotary cutter, a rotary mat, and a marking utensil. I love using the friction pens. They erase with heat, but I wouldn't recommend using them to mark the front of your quilt because I've heard the lines can come back. So it's perfect for half square triangles or lines that you're going to cut. You'll also want a long quilting ruler, and then I'm gonna use two square rulers. Not necessary, but it'll make cutting a little bit easier, a six and a half and a four and a half square ruler. And as always, everything will be listed in the description of this video. We'll start our project by cutting our background fabric, and I'm using a white background to really stand out against my charm pack fabric that I've chose. And to get started, I always square up the edge so I get a nice 90 degree angle. And then I'm just going to cut five inch strips. We'll need a total of five five inch strips. And I just changed my rotary blade. I'm testing out the endurance blade that Ulfa offers and I'm really enjoying it, but the higher price tag makes me a little nervous because I do tend to nick my blades and I feel like it's such a waste if I nick a blade before it's done. Now I'm shifting my fabric back over so that I can cut my four and a half inch strips. We'll need a total of seven four and a half inch strips for this quilt. While I'm cutting this background fabric, I would love to know what your favorite rulers are. I bought these OmniGrid rulers when I first started quilting because they're really budget friendly, but I've had to add some sticky grips to the back, which has worked out totally fine, but I know that Creative Grids comes with a non-slip backing, and I have a few Creative Grids rulers I've added to my collection, and I really love that backing, so let me know what your favorite rulers are. And now I'm just squaring up the fabric again before I cut my next set of strips. I tend to square up the fabric in between each kind of set of strips that I cut. And for this set, we are going to need seven inch strips of fabric. So there's a lot of ways that you can cut fabric that's longer than the ruler you have. And for this, because it's only an inch longer than my ruler, I'm just gonna use my cutting mat lines and my ruler. So I'm gonna line it up just an inch beyond what I need because I have a six inch ruler and that's gonna give me a nice seven inch cut. Make sure that you measure your mat before you do this method because some mats are not as accurate as rulers. We'll cut two seven inch strips. And lastly, we'll cut two three and a half inch strips. So I'm sure you've noticed I've been a little bit chattier in this video than past videos. I've gotten a lot of comments saying they like how straight to the point my videos are, but I enjoy talking with you guys and letting you get to know me a little better. So you can expect me to be a little bit more chatty during the videos, but I'll keep things quilting focused. Now I'm going to sub cut the five inch strips that we cut and we're gonna cut these into a total of 40 five inch squares. And each strip will give us eight five inch squares. So I'm just stacking them on top of each other, keeping them folded so that this cutting goes a little bit quicker. And I said the word subcut earlier. This word confused me so much when I first started reading quilt patterns. It basically just means you're cutting down those strips into smaller pieces. We'll end up with 40 five inch squares. Next, we're gonna subcut the four and a half inch strips to get a total of 63 four and a half inch squares and we'll do the same method. I'm just gonna stack all these on top of each other. If you need to do one at a time, that's totally fine. As you stack more, your cuts can get less and less accurate. And remember to cut off that selvage before you get started. You'll be able to get nine four and a half inch squares from each strip, and that means that for that last ninth square, you'll have to unfold the folded edge and then just trim it up into a four and a half inch square. 
and all this trimming is where a four and a half inch square ruler really comes in handy. The free pattern comes with a cutting diagram, so you'll be able to visually see how you're gonna cut all these pieces and how to cut the squares from the strips. Again, you'll need a total of 63 four and a half inch squares. Next, we'll subcut our seven inch strips, and in a perfect world, you'd be able to get six seven inch squares out of one seven inch strip, but I came up a little bit short. So there is extra fabric here if you need to do this because seven times six equals 42. So that's kind of cutting it close, but there is extra to account for that. So what I did was I cut five seven inch squares from one strip and then three from the other. And from the rest of the seven inch strip, we're gonna cut two, three and three quarter inch squares. And lastly, we need to trim down these three and a half inch strips. So from these strips, we're going to need two 23 and a quarter inch strips. So I'm going to lay them flat, stack them on top of each other and then make that cut to get the two that we need. This quilt pattern is set on point. So what that means is the blocks are at a 45 degree angle. So in order to make the quilt square, we need to cut the triangles for the corners and the triangles for the sides of the quilt. So for the seven inch squares, you are going to make two diagonal cuts and you don't even have to move it, just rotate your ruler and you're gonna go diagonal to diagonal for both cuts and you'll end up with four triangles and then you'll repeat this process for each of the seven inch squares to get a total of 32 set in triangles and these are the ones that will go on the top bottom and sides of your quilt because we're cutting diagonally through our fabric these triangles are going to be extra stretchy along the places that we cut so just keep that in mind you'll want to handle them the least amount as possible because it's really easy to distort them and make them not straight anymore and the last cut we'll do for our fabric b fabric is to cut these three and three quarter inch squares so we're just going to cut along the diagonal once and these will end up being the corner triangles so for each corner of our quilt you'll sew on these triangles. Woo, that was a lot of background fabric cutting. So now we can move on to our charm square fabric. This is the fun part, this is the pretty fabric. So we actually only need 40 five inch squares and charm packs typically come in packs of 42. So you'll want to pick two squares to remove. And I typically do the ones that blend into my background fabric the most. So my background fabric is white. So I'm gonna try to pick a couple that are really close to white that really wouldn't have much contrast and I'm gonna remove those. So I chose these two really light fabrics. They're basically white. They have like a really nondescript print and I'll save those for another project. Now we're gonna assemble our two at a time half square triangles. So the first step is to take your fabric B background fabric and then we'll draw a diagonal line on it. And again, I'm using this friction pen because it erases with heat and it doesn't really matter because we're gonna cut on the line anyways. So we'll draw that line and then we are going to pair it up with a fabric A. So I'm gonna use this green five inch square from my charm pack and you want to put these squares together, right sides together, and a right side is basically the pretty side of the fabric. For solid fabric, they often don't have a right side or wrong side, so you can't really go wrong there. And we'll pair them together, right side together, and we're gonna sew a quarter inch away on either side of this line. This is what it'll look like after it's sewn together. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but I've sewn on each side of that line. And now we are going to cut along the marked line. And because we've sewn each half together, cutting this line will give us two half square triangles. So this is why it's called the two at a time method. Basically, you can make two for the price of one. There are ways to make four at a time, eight at a time, even like 32 at a time. But because we're working with smaller squares of fabric, two at a time is the most convenient in this case. And now that your half square triangles are assembled, we need to press and we're gonna press towards the darker fabric. After your half square triangles are pressed, it is time to trim. So in the pattern, I give you a little bit of extra wiggle room for trimming. We are gonna trim these down to four and a half inches. So again, this four and a half inch square ruler is really handy for this pattern, but you definitely don't need it. So I'm gonna line up that diagonal line on the ruler with the diagonal line of the half square triangle and then trim two sides. 
And then next we are going to rotate it and do the exact same thing. A rotating cutting mat would actually be really handy here too, especially because we have to trim 80 of these bad boys. So that's going to take some time. So I really don't mind investing in tools that I'm going to use for projects like this to make it a little bit easier, like a block lock ruler, a rotating mat. Those are things that'll make it a little bit faster, but you definitely don't need those tools to trim half square triangles. Like here, all I'm using is a square ruler and you can use a ruler of any size you don't need to use the exact size that you're trimming to, but it is helpful. And here's my stack of 80 assembled and trimmed and pressed half square triangles. Now it is time to actually assemble our quilt. And I know an on point quilt is a little bit different, might be a little bit scary, but it's not as complicated as it looks. So the first thing I recommend is actually laying all your pieces out so you can get nice color distribution with your charm squares. And after that, then we can start actually assembling these rows. So this is the first section we're gonna do. It's kind of like our first row and it's the corner of the quilt. So the first step is going to be attaching the corner triangle and that's the small triangle we cut from those three and three quarter inch squares. We're gonna attach the corner triangle to our half square triangle. So I'm gonna move these set in triangles to the side and we're just gonna focus on the corner triangle and our half square triangle. So the first step is to fold each of these in half and make a crease in our fabric. And this is just so we can visually see where the center of the triangle and the center of the half square triangle are. And after we have made those creases, we are going to pair up the fabrics right sides together on those creases. And this will allow us to keep everything nice and centered as we sew it together. So we are going to sew this piece together with a quarter inch seam allowance. It can be helpful to use pins here as well. This is what the unit looks like after it's pieced together and the corner triangle is on the left, the pattern fabric is on the bottom, and those dog ears are totally normal so expect those to be on your project. Next I'll show you how to attach the set in triangles or the triangles on the sides and the top and bottom of your quilt. So these are the larger triangles we cut from the 7 inch squares. So you are going to line up the 90 degree angle with the 90 degree angle of your half square triangle and then sew along the side there. You can trim the dog ear if you want to or just leave it, whatever you prefer. This is what that first row looks like after it's assembled and I'm gonna lay out the second row so you can see how this sort of comes together. So again, this is the second row and if you just turn your head a little bit, you kind of see that it's the second row of the quilt and you're just gonna repeat this process. Piece everything together and here's one, two, and three. So these are the first three rows and I am pressing everything away from the half square triangles. It just seems to be the most convenient and it's kind of the way the fabric wants to go. And this will allow each of the rows to nest as you sew them together. I'll show you a closer look of what nesting looks like. So the seams in row one are pressed in one direction and the seams in row two are pressed in the opposite. So each of these intersections, the bulk of the fabric is on either side of the seam. And this allows things to stay nice and square and it gives a really great finished look when the seams are nested on each row. So this is what it looks like when it's all pieced together. And you can press your seams whatever direction you like. I pressed mine open um, and it has these little dog ears here that will get trimmed at the very end of the process once everything is sewn together. So you're just going to keep going row by row to assemble the entire quilt and it can kind of help you if you rotate everything so it's the right direction for sewing. Um, and then you can see it come together as we rotate it 45 degrees. For the video, I separated out the first three rows and then the rest of the quilt, but if you want it to be more convenient to sew together as you're piecing the entire quilt, I would recommend doing like half and half. So this is what the whole thing looks like after it's completely pieced together. The last step is to add a bottom row to the quilt to make everything nice and symmetrical. So we're gonna sew these three and a half inch strips together to give us one long strip and then we're just going to piece it to the bottom of the quilt and this is going to help the bottom of our quilt match the top so the negative space is symmetrical 
And here's a look at the finished pieced quilt. I have not basted a quilt and binded it yet, so this is all I got. But you can see why it's called bunting. The fabric pointing down kind of reminds me of bunting, which is why I named it that. And I really hope you download the free pattern and I would love to see the finished project. Shoot me an email or tag me on social media. If you liked today's video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss the next quilting tutorial.